Hey everybody, it's Peyton Garland with iDisciple Publishing, and we have with us today Sherry Rigby. You might recognize her from The Least of These, October Baby, Wildflower, but most of you probably recognize her from the big box office hit from 2019, Overcomer. So we know Sherry Rigby as an actress, but today we want to talk about Sherry Rigby as an author. Her new book, Consider the Lilies, is coming out around Mother's Day. So are you ready to talk? Yes, I am so ready to talk. It's going to be great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We're super excited to have you. Our first big question is, you are a Christian award-winning actress in 2020, but 2020 is also Hollywood, secular dominated. So how do you blend those two? Or is there not a blend? No, I mean, I think there is, but at the same time, I think it's really where each and every person has been called to, right? So even being an actress, you know, God called my husband and I into Hollywood back in 2009. And at that particular point in time, right before there, that I was actually working in some of the secular world too. Right. But I do believe that so much, and even what this book talks about with Consider the Lilies, is that God really does have a plan for our lives. And right. he has a course that he set for us. And so my course in being in Hollywood was really first and foremost, God spoke to my heart and said, you're here for my women. And then secondly, what God started to do was he put me in family and faith and inspirational projects. And I have to tell you, I mean, it's been incredible. I have had quite the journey to the people that I get to work with. I get to go to work on these film sets and I get to do devotional and prayer time. I get to mentor and work with women that I love. I see how God has married those two together. And um, it's never really ever hindered me at all. In fact, I think really being in Hollywood has just been um, part of my mission. It's being on a battlefield that is beautiful and life-giving and um, I get to interact with people that most would say, you know, um, you know, why would you interact with them or why would you be with them? And I get to be like, hey, I just get to go share a message of hope and love right. and, and shine as bright as I possibly can in the places that God puts me. And I love being there. So you were a mentor, right? Yes. For women, I think I did a little bit of research about the past 10 years you've mm -hmm. served as a mentor. So one of my personal questions is across the board, regardless of age, race, background, what is the biggest thing that you see Christian women struggling with right now? And what is your advice to them? Wow, that is such a great question. I think the number one thing that I have um, had to work with women on over these last probably 10 to 12 years, and even myself, is we've gone through this time in culture, and I see even some of the, the, the leaders that we look to talking about purpose, right? We, we, we use these words, purpose and calling, and um, and at the same time, identity, right? And so often what I hear from women that call me up and they're broken and devastated that they think they've lost their purpose and they're trying to find their purpose. And there's this constant conversation about what's your purpose. Right. And, I, and, and, and really biblically, and what I try to encourage women with is our purpose is Jesus Christ. That's it. You can't miss your purpose there, right? You cannot <laughs> miss your purpose. Right. And he brings you into your calling. And so there is no way to lose him. If you are a follower of Christ and you love Jesus with all of your heart and you are serving him, you have found your purpose. Now, the difference in where I start to take women through and, and what I walk through and mentor them is we all go through different seasons. Seasons has nothing to do with our purpose. Purpose, Christ, first and foremost. Seasons, as mothers, we are home raising our children. Maybe right. we're working, whatever that looks like, but we are a wife and a mother. Maybe we're a college student, and that time is spent learning and growing so that we can go out and do something else in our career. Or maybe God has put us into a career path right away. Or ministry leader. Those right. seasons can shift. Our purpose doesn't. I like that. Thanks for answering my question. Yeah, I, I think it's really big. And I think that culturally, we've really done a disservice to a lot of people who say, um, you know, get out there and find your purpose. Your purpose is Christ. The calling on our lives is, is right there in the words of the Bible. It says we are to glorify God and the kingdom. And everything beyond that point is just used in the talents and gifts that God has given us. Right. And no matter what season of life we're in, we never lose our purpose. All we need to do is keep our eyes on him 
and work to the best of our ability to where he's put us and to actually explore the things right. in our lives, the talents, the gifts that he has given us and bestowed upon us to right. use in the places that we put our feet. I love that. So that kind of leads me to my next question. I read on your website, it was a quote by you and it struck me and I really enjoyed it. It said, my story, all I can think of is that I said yes to sharing it. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question to you is, does everybody share their story? It might look different, mm -hmm. but everybody's sharing their story and that's part of everybody's calling, you think? Yeah, absolutely, I do. And I, I really do believe that our story is part of our calling on our life. Um, you know, it says scripturally in Psalms, let the redeemed say they are redeemed. Right. You know, we have a story. Um, it says in the book of Revelation, you know, they will come by the testimony and the blood of Christ. You know, we are not perfect. We have a savior that died on the cross for us to cover our sins. And, um, you know, our stories are stories that should be authentic and transparent and, um, they're human and people need to see, I think, that type of right. uh, and hear those types of stories coming from people that say you know what I lived a crazy life right I have been through divorce I am post abortive I have been through an abusive marriage I have um, done things in my past that you know I could constantly be lingering in this I am ashamed type of mentality right. but I am redeemed I get to share that and I get to share with people how God has literally redeemed restored and then prepared me in a way to go out and share that testimony with people to say God never leaves us behind in fact any of anything he takes the ordinary does extraordinary and right. he wants to use your life to share with others that they have an opportunity to do the same thing we're equal right we get to do we he gives us a story and we should be sharing it and because of him our lives are transformed see i saw something on instagram actually just about 20 minutes ago and somebody said you were created to be real and not perfect that's right and i, I love that yeah. real which real. means bad stuff's gonna happen or you know like <laughs> and even as a christian right right we still go th through things and i think that's something again in today's culture that we have to be reminded that we're, we live in a selfie you know uh, filtered life absolutely people see probably only the best of the best of right. what we want people to see and yet the reality is is that most people just need to see who people are authentically how yeah. they're real and how they can inspire others to to be okay with who they are I think my deepest connections with people have been when someone's been willing to open up and be raw and real yeah. about their life and I feel like I am in that space where I can be raw and real. And, and that's not always pretty. That's usually not pretty. It's not. <laughs> it's but, messy. But, but that's where you communicate. I right. think it's even in that reminder of that example, two things, the, the example of Christ and when you sit down and you have that relationship with Jesus and you're just sharing and giving your heart. Right. You can be authentic and you have that, that relationship, that, that loving relationship. It's the same thing people want to see. Right. Um, from you and I think when I said yes to sharing my testimony really what it did was it allowed God to use me in ways that I could have never imagined yeah. or ever believed by my own doing so right. when I said yes to sharing all of the stuff from my past he you know not only was he using me as an actress but he gave me my first book you know to share my actual testimony and then he gave me an opportunity to be a speaker and to go out and work with pregnancy care center, centers and maternity homes and share my testimony of being a teenage mother. Um, he's given me opportunity to, now to tell other women's stories. I think when we say yes and we allow our hands to be open to him and to right. use those, he just gives us so much more than we could have ever imagined. So, yeah. So in your first book, you got to share your testimony, right? So. I was reading the title of your new book, Consider the Lilies, mm -hmm. and I, I was sitting there, I was a Christian school kid, raised in church, I was like, that sounds familiar, Consider the Lilies, and so I just Googled it. I said, I feel like I've heard that phrase before, and I found Matthew 6, 28, and it said, Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Was that, was that a verse that kind of caught your eye when you were 
writing this book? Yeah, absolutely. I think one thing in dealing with women in today's culture and even talking about being authentic and transparent, you know, we base this um, larger than life um, in our face social media oh, yeah. perfection <laughs> right. day in and day out, right? right? And so what I see women that are extremely successful that, you know, whether they're in business, whether they're leadership, um, whatever their life looks like, um, you know, there's still this idea of I want more, I need more, um, I'm not enough, um, and there's this constant spinning. And yeah. what it really does remind uh, women and men, I think, just biblically speaking, is that God did not create us to toil and spin. Right. He actually reminds us in that scripture that he has eyes for us even greater than he's clothed the kings, right? right? He knows. And I think also to the deep roots, what, what really hit me about lilies was that, um, you know, God is so good in his creation, but he took these beautiful flowers and not only are they fragrant, not only are they, the bulbs populate, you know, when they go out, they see, right? <laughs> right? I mean, we can't even imagine how many yeah. fields. It's like one lily, you know, the one bulb is 50 more. Right. Like that is massive in culture. How are we to be pouring forth? But what I loved was in this also is that the roots of a lily actually go down so deep that they actually form colonies. And so one of the things I thought was so representative of our world and what we needed to be reminded of is that God gives us relationship to form right. these colonies to grow roots together, to lock arms, right. and that when we are in that season, we pour forth that fragrance and we are therefore pouring forth into others. Right. And there is no reason to toil and spin. He yeah. has put us right where he wants us to be and we are the ones to get rooted in him with our eyes focused on him first and foremost, right. being reminded that our season will come. And that's what I want to remind women of. Right. Yeah, I just, I mean, lot, I was just thinking about this where I was reading. I picked up um, 30, uh, it was, it's Forbes, 30 under 30. These are yeah. 30 people under the age of 30 that are billionaires. The first three are women. Yeah. And yet, we are in such an incredible time in our history. So what I really want women to do is to pick up this book and to read it and be reminded that they are for such a time as this and that there is no reason for them to toil and spin. And when they start to feel that way, they go back to the basic principles of getting their eyes back on Christ and where their power actually comes from. I usually yeah. just kill plants. So no. I, just, I stay away from everything about flowers. Don't care. Me plants, too. Just, I don't touch. I admire them, but I do not touch them. Now, you have your own women's ministry, correct? I do. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So when I went to Hollywood in 2009, um, I, I, you know, like so many others, I believed I was going to go to Hollywood and be a huge movie star, right? I mean, sure. that was like the thing I was so focused on. God obviously called me to Hollywood. I am going to be star <laughs> and I was like okay here we go God this must be the plan of my life <laughs> and um, you know he has such deeper and bigger plans and not that that's not a, a right, great plan sure. but I was sitting in a in a um, acting class in a little studio in Hollywood with one of the greatest John Kirby's and acting coach to Jim Caviezel and Jeff Bridges and Cameron Diaz and Christy Metz, I mean, you name it, the best of right. the best. And as I sat there in 2009, looking around this, this room right. of these working actors and actresses, what I saw was um, devastation, loneliness. Um, and all of a sudden, God just started to speak to my heart and he said, you're here for my women. And so the next thing I knew, he was praying, you know, I was just praying and God was speaking to me and he was saying, I want you to start this women's group and I want you to bring women in and I want you to praise me first and then pray. And so my very first woman that I invited to my home was not a believer. <laughs> and, but, but, but because people are desiring that, that right. relationship and connection, 
Um, and the next thing I knew, I went from one woman, two women, to 25. And then I had women from all walks of life in Hollywood that anywhere from 18 to 30 that I was ministering to and working with. They were ministering to me. We were forming a bond. And really, the women in my world has been to really encourage, inspire, and engage, but first and foremost, to praise God, and then to go back and pray for one another, and really, though, create authentic, deep-rooted relationships. That's and that's right. what it's been. And now, I get to see how God takes me into all of these movies, and I always think, here I go, I'm gonna go work on this movie, you know, and um, before I know it, he has one, two, three women that he's put in, in my path, and. And he says, these are the women you're going to walk alongside of from this project. And so all the way through my career, I have women that I do life with now. October yeah. Baby, Rachel Hendricks, Colleen sure. Tressler. Um, with Overcomer now, I've got Tori Hunter and Micah Hansen. And uh, October Baby, another one was Anna Redmond. I mean, I have women all over the world. So it's been fantastic to see when he has a plan. Remember, purpose is him calling. Right. My calling is to serve women, ultimately, and um, and the women he has he has brought. I love that. I think it's so neat. You said between the ages of eighteen and thirty, because I think I'm twenty five, so I'm right in the mm -hmm. middle of that. And that's when life. That's when parents are saying, "Hey, who are you? What are you doing? Yeah. You got to figure it out." Yeah. It's you know, and in at my age, even at 25, you don't feel like you have all the answers. And I think that's where the spinning starts, right. is when you don't have all of the answers right. and you feel pressured that you should know and you mm -hmm. should be grounded and you should be in this phase of life, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you're spinning. Yeah, so you're I spinning. think that's awesome that that's yeah. an age group that you were really passionate about. I appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> and, well, and, I'm, and, and I think that's probably been probably the focal, but I also have women that are 60 and I think what's been so beautiful to see women that have gone into another stage in their life is to really understand that God, again, His purpose is still Him. Right. And you're going to go through seasons, and when you're an empty nester, what is the next season of your life looking like? Right. You know, He doesn't just put you out the pasture, you know, right. like so many would want us to believe. You know, right. He does have a plan. And so, you know, how are we encouraging and inspiring women? Right. and pouring forth and so women of all ages have dreams and desires right, sure. talents and giftings and we just need to be encouraging them so that they don't spin and that they always keep their eyes on Jesus first right. and he'll lead the way well Sherry thank you so much mm -hmm. for sitting down with me to talk about your book about life about Jesus it's been awesome and it's Mother's Day right yes, Mother's okay Day. everybody yep. so check out her book at www.considerthelilliesbook.com and Amazon thank you so much